So if you're anything like me and you spend an unhealthy amount of time on Pinterest, then you've probably seen this design style everywhere. Now, this mysterious poster design style seems to go by many different names, but the most common name you'll hear is brutalism. And in this video, I'm going to be revealing the secrets of how to create a brutalism poster like this completely from scratch. So we can break down a brutalism poster into five main elements. Number one is going to be the images. We need something striking and in your face, but something that is still kind of weird and abstract. Number two is typography. Brutalism loves fonts that are big, bold, and impossible to ignore. But what exactly are steps three, four, and five? Well, you'll have to keep watching to find out. So let's start off by opening up a shiny new Photoshop project. And these are actually the settings I use for poster designs. So if you want to pause the video and steal these settings, you're more than welcome to do so. And let's start off with a nice gray background. And like I said, the first thing I'm going to add is some images. And we want these images to be bold and dynamic and eye-catching so that they capture people's attention straight away. Now you can make brutalism posters about anything. A lot of people make them about anime TV shows and things like that. But I'm actually going to make a music themed poster and I think I'm going to make it for Tyler, the creator. So I absolutely love Tyler, the creator's music. And I think he has some of the best, most well executed visuals in all of hip hop. And I think in terms of visuals, he's on another planet compared to pretty much any other hip hop artist. And I'd say the only other artist that's really on his level is ASAP Rocky as well. So let's have a little look around. Okay. And by pure coincidence, I found this photo of him and ASAP Rocky together. And maybe that means it's meant to be. So I'm definitely going to use this photo to kick things off and let's drag these two into Photoshop and let's put this around here and I'm also going to add in a very simple rectangle like this with a thin white border so for this brutalism style that we're going for you'll notice the images are very grungy and distorted and very kind of noisy as well so how do we actually go about creating that effect and there are like a hundred different ways you can do this in Photoshop but in this video I'm going to show you the single best technique you can use and that is threshold so we're going to come down here and add a threshold adjustment layer and you can see that it's added this very very harsh effect and right now it doesn't really look that amazing but I'm going to give you a little tip here and I don't want to get your hopes up too much but this tip is probably going to change your life so we're going to go to filter noise and add noise and add a small amount of noise to the image and as you can see the threshold effect now looks completely different and it has way more detail just by adding a little bit of noise and lastly I'm also going to convert that image to a smart object as well okay so now let's add a second image into the design and I really like this image here so let's just drag that into Photoshop and put that around there and let's also go ahead and add in another rectangle like this so I want to add in some sort of graphic behind him so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the background and I am feeling kind of lazy so we're just going to go for select and select subject to quickly get rid of the background and also to keep things nice and cohesive I'm going to add the exact same threshold effect to this image as well so now I want to add something behind behind him and I did just find these wireframe grid type things so let's see how that looks if we put it behind him like this oh I quite like that actually but let's try that in blue and let's thicken it up a little bit and also we can add some shadow behind him as well and yeah I think that looks very nice okay so now it's time to move on to step two which if you remember is typography and with this style of poster we want something that's bold and very thick so I'm actually going to use a font called high rise which by the way is probably the best font out there if you're looking for long extended text. So let's type that in here and let's change the color so that it matches the same blue from before. And I'm also going to add in some more text on the left as well. So let's type in Wolf, which is one of his albums. And I'm going to change this one to a font called Allowing Freedom, which is an absolute banger of a font and for now let's change that back to white and put that around here okay so next up we're going to add some smaller graphics and details to the poster so you'll notice that with this kind of design there's usually lots of small details and pieces of text that actually make a huge difference to the final poster so for this one i'm going to add a simple track list down here for the album and obviously we're going to use helvetica for this one and let's also add in some small shapes and other graphics to add in a little bit of extra detail to the poster and if you do 
want to download some icons and shapes like these, there's a free sampler available on my online store. And there's also a ton of free texture packs and things like that. So I'll leave a link in the description if you do want to check that out. Okay, so let's move on to step number four. And this is quite a weird one, but in this step, we're going to add some cohesion. So what exactly do I mean by that? Basically, we want all of these elements in the poster to fit together and actually complement each other. And this step is to make sure that this poster doesn't just look like a load of randomly placed images and bits of text and things like that. And one great way to do this is actually have some of the images or elements actually overlapping one another. So I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try increasing the size of this image up here and actually make it look like he's kind of extending over the border of the rectangle. And yeah, I think that looks way more visually interesting. I'm also going to drag in an image to go here so that these two images are overlapping a little bit. So for this one, let's go into the filter gallery and add a graphic pen filter and put this image behind the other one like this. I'm also going to change this part of the image up here to blue so that it matches the rest of the poster. And yeah, I think that is looking beautiful. So I'm thinking that I want to add in one final image to this poster and I'm going to try adding in this butterfly image here. Now I have an idea in my head for this and I have no idea if it's going to work, but we're going to go for it anyway. So let's drag this into Photoshop and let's go select, select subject and remove the background. And again, let's add some noise and a threshold adjustment layer. And I'm just going to try dotting some of these around the poster like this. And have I just ruined it? I don't really know how I feel about that. You know what? Let me know in the comments if you prefer it with or without the butterflies. So the fifth and final step in creating a brutalism poster is texture. So I'm going to drag in this texture from my scanned grunge texture pack. And let's add in another one because obviously you can never have too much texture. And I'm also going to add a displacement map to these edges to give them a nice authentic printed feel. And displacement maps are a little bit confusing and to be honest, they deserve their own tutorial. So if you do want me to create a video about how to create this effect, let me know in the comments. And the last thing I'm going to do is add a noise layer to the entire project. So let's go to new layer, make sure this is set to overlay, tick this box, convert this new layer to a smart object, and then go to filter, noise, add noise, and let's just add a subtle amount to the entire design. And there we have it. So here is the final poster. So I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. And again, I'm not 100% sure whether I like the butterflies or not, but I do like how they add a little bit of depth to the design. And if you do want to download the project file for this design, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you do use the template, make sure to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.